Russell Next Westbrook, time. one of your favorite players. My man. Now on yet another team. I feel like since since that MVP year, he's went from what's from Houston to mm-hmm. Lakers. Was it a stop mm-hmm. in between after Lakers? I feel no, like no Washington. Houston, Lakers. Oh yeah, DC. He had a, he had a couple triple doubles in DC. Yeah, DC, then Lakers, then traded again. Then Clippers, and now he is with, he's going to be joining the Denver Nuggets, you know, after, you know, he's just bought out and everything. I'm sure they're just getting getting some of the clerical work done. Mm-hmm. I understand the temptation for both in doing this. A, Russell Westbrook is an offense into himself, right? He doesn't need to live off of Nikola Jokic the way that some of these other offensive options for the Nuggets do. And the Nuggets have limited resources because you got three max players. And I don't think three max players is a tenable way to conduct business in this NBA. But when you sign Michael Porter Jr. to a max and you're not aware of the, you know, second luxury tax apron world that's going to come in two or three years, this is what you're forced to do. Mm -hmm. My question, Jay, is I don't know if Russell Westbrook can finish as well as he needs to to play off of Nikola Jokic. And I don't know how good he is with the ball carrying an offense when Jokic and Jamal Murray aren't on the floor to make it make sense. So when they lost Bruce Brown, they lost that spastic like energy of like, all right, let's switch up the the mojo here. Mm -hmm. But the difference is Bruce, obviously at this point in his career, better defender, right? Obviously Russell still got some, some offensive bounce, but not, you know, never been a, a, a shooter. And, you know, at this point in his career, it's only so much to be expected. What I love is that my man, Russell Westbrook, is on that Glenn Robinson ring chase. Like, people don't remember Glenn oh, won yeah. one with the Spurs, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like, people don't, people don't, like, Glenn Robinson was the dog, like, literally big dog in Milwaukee, you know, first dude to ask for $100 million straight out the gate of college. People like, this is crazy. Glenn ran, went along to score, what, 20 points a game, 22 24 points a game for about a good seven, eight years. Bounced around a little bit. Found himself Mid-range on that master. San Antonio. Yeah, found himself on that San Antonio Spurs squad. And he's a champion. I don't care what you say. Russell just trying to get a championship. And and at this point in his career, where everywhere you go, you are going to a couple of things. You're going to draw the ire of the fan base the moment they realize that after the last 17 years that your jump shot isn't as wet as Ooh. you think it should be. Ooh. And then also, he's going to then get into it with some of those fans, whether it be on at home or on the road. Those are two things that are guaranteed. But his energy, like for me, the Denver Nuggets are a nice team that borders on ornery. But they aren't the team that's telling you that we are better than you in a way that champions should move. And I think you saw that last year. And I think that's why the Minnesota Timberwolves walked into that that stadium in game seven was like, oh, no, 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 no. They haven't told us that they're better than us. They just have won. Right. I think I think Russell will provide some of that energy. But in the end, you know, it's. A lot of these dudes that we watching now that that we saw win MVPs and saw be great, we we hoping that we could squeeze a little bit more juice out of it. Just to, that, just for fans' animal, sake, animal just squeeze. For, ain't no, that's what I'm saying. Animal just squeeze, for fans' sake, <laughs> ain't nothing there anymore, right? Animal isn't squeeze. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy where he, where we thought his career might be going after the Pat, Patrick Beverly knee incidents and all the other things and watching him and Derek at the same time yeah, where he was like, yeah. oh, which one is the more athletic point guard yeah. or which one's going to be graded down the road? And that dude is still, like, when, when he's on the floor and when healthy, he's still trying to move. That's the one thing. That's why I love Russell. Russell, you might hate it if he's on your team, if you're watching him every single night. But when he's not on your squad, name me a dude who's going to play that way and with that tenor for that long. Like, there's only certain rappers who could do what they do for so long. You're like, yo, I'm still not tired of it. Like, Russell is the too short and the push of T of NBA basketball. That's an interesting. He's like, I don't care. I don't care what you say. Talk about pimping. Talk about cocaine. That's that's it. That's it. That's it. I don't want to hear anything else out those two. No, you don't want to hear no mature. You don't want to hear no that's, maturing. Not at all. You want to hear no not growth. All right, Russell, if I dare see you run a pick and roll, will you give it up? I'm turning the TV off. I, I don't. I don't want that. I want you screaming down the court, beating your team and the other team down the court, and trying to dunk on everybody. 
I'm fine with that. Look, man, well, one of my one of my close friends in the business said this, he, and and it's not Bomani before people before people think it is. He <laughs> said Russell Westbrook is the most loyal dog you will ever have, and he'll also shit on your couch. Hundred percent. That's what you it gotta is. Got to deal with it. That's what you it gotta is. Deal with it. Now it's funny you bring up Glenn Robinson because my mind just went to you know I just went through the archives. There's something to be done about those mid late '90s small forwards who weren't quite Grant Hill and weren't playing with Michael Jordan, so they couldn't be Scottie Pippen. You know what I mean? Glenn Robinson, Glenn Rice, Jamal Mashburn. Ooh. Dog, Ooh, do you remember Jamal Mashburn? Jamal was nasty. He could Lefty. be illegal offense in today's game. A 6'8 dude with handle, a big body, body and a yeah, jumper? Yeah. So this is when I first saw, because especially with the Kentucky stuff, when I first saw Julius Randle, I'm like, oh, they messed around and tried to recruit and got <laughs> Jamal Mashburn again. Now, you know, as time went on, like Jamal was never really appreciated the way he should no. have been because he was playing with two other stars at the time, too, in Dallas. But, hey, man, you talk about a legend at the bank. You, you go ahead and Google what Jamal Mashburn been up to these last decade or so. Jamal doing all right. And he's one of those cats who, in my interactions with him, has always been a, a smooth, pleasant dude. So, yeah, man. Yeah, Jamal. I mean, hell, back to the, back to the, you know, but like, you can't throw Mitch in that category because Mitch was a Mitch shooting was two, guard. Yeah, right? Mitch was two. Yeah, Mitch was a shooting guard. But there's a bunch of guys like that who, you know, be, post-Jordan, I think it's, I think it's one of the things that kind of ruined basketball conversations is that post Jordan, we weren't allowed to appreciate dudes for just being cold. It was how many rings did you get? Yeah. Right. Yeah, like yeah. I remember my dad talking about Bernard King and cats like that. And it's like, you can appreciate and love that career. And that can be your favorite player. Now it's like, if you say Paul George is your favorite player, you get scorned. Like what you, you, you root for a guy who's never won anything, but like, no, nah, but he been cold for 15, 14 years. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay to celebrate the dudes who haven't won as well yeah and right this is right before we get to the paul george slander uh of, of, yeah no, of no i was about to say yeah. it's definitely coming yeah it's definitely it's coming. coming but but yeah, but yeah. john put this in the rundown so we're going to get, get to it right before the break uh the hornets are buying out reggie jackson he's joining the philadelphia 76ers he's also close with paul george so just more i guess reinforcements for what they're trying to do in philly that's it for the outlet and we're going to be right back and we're going to talk about the Eastern Conference offseason outlook here with Jason Goff. We're going to pay some bills.